My name is Caro Verbeek and I call myself an art historian of the other senses. I specialized in tactile art and olfactory art. And this all started when I visited the Biennale di Venezia in 1999, I believe. There was a work by Ernesto Neto, We Fishing the Time. Very spicy odor. And all I, um, what I remember is that I was walking through the, through the Arsenale and I smelled something and I was really annoyed, very irritated. I thought, why is this smell lingering here? Why do I smell the kitchen? Why didn't they get rid of this very annoying scent? And then I saw the visual source and then I realized, okay, smell can be um, a really important part of a work of art. And I started doing research, starting looking for examples, and I found many of them. And what also intrigues me is that the history of art seems odorless. Um, art historians didn't describe sense. But many artists at the beginning of the 20th century were already engaged in other senses, using taste, smell, touch. And uh, I aim to reconstruct this history to sensually, sensually reconstruct um, a different history of art. Nowadays we seem to consider a sense as either agreeable or disagreeable, but in the Middle Ages, smell was um, a language parallel to a spoken language, and it had a meaning. So, um, in the biblical story of the three uh, magi, or the three kings, presenting their gifts to uh, Jesus Christ, as seen in the painting here, uh, myrrh and incense have a meaning. Um, incense because it's sweet, and sweet scents were considered uh, prayers, uh, prayers to God, because they ascend. Mm -hmm. Whereas myrrh, which is bitter, was seen as mm, a metaphor for the suffering of Christ, at least in the Middle Ages. People understood this. Mm. And what really intrigues me, and Cecil Tolas talks about this uh, very often, are the relation between uh, a label, a word, and an actual smell, and taboos on smell. And um, I quite liked our example of the cheese. That's why um, a few days ago I did a tour at the Rijksmuseum and I brought a smell which was the synthetic uh, rendered smell of the sweat of five dancers, of the sweat performance by Peter de Kuperen and Jan Fabre. And I made people believe that it was cheese while watching this painting, this still life with cheese. And I heard people say, well, this is actually quite good. And I asked them, what kind of cheese do you think it is? They said, well, I think it's a Goudsekaas, or at least it's an old cheese. And when I told them that it was uh, sweat, body odor, feet, armpits, some were quite shocked. Surrealist used smells for almost every single one of their exhibitions. The first one was in 1938. The whole place smelled like coffee. Simone de Beauvoir, who was one of the visitors, commented on it and she said, well, the whole place smelled like Brazilian coffee. Some art historians wrote about this, but what I wonder, what does it mean? Of course it had a meaning, mm -hmm. and I think I know the meaning. 1938 was the year that the Brazilian, that Brazilian artist, um, entered a surrealist group. So I'm sure that this Brazilian coffee beans that one could uh, smell there have to do with this fact. People uh, find it difficult to really think olfactorily, to think from uh, smells and not from the visual.